Hello. Today, I'm going through the process of selecting a charger or power adapter. There are tons of options on the market, and there are some red flags to look out for when selecting the correct charger. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the basics of power adapters, what they can do, very little about how they work, and I'll go over the USB-C port to figure out if the charger you want will be compatible with the device you have. I will go over a few tricks I've learned to make chargers work with more devices as well. This is a clip show if you want to sum it up quickly. So thanks for tuning in. I will be talking about a bunch of products throughout the video, and I will have affiliate links in the description. These don't cost you anything, but I make a few percent if you buy with one of the links. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters, for you help keep the channel going. If you want a technical deep dive on any of these products, I have full reviews linked in the description. I need to spend a little time learning to figure out what all this USB stuff even means. So bear with me on the technical bits, and of course, ask questions if you don't understand something. USB-C ports do more than deliver data now. They deliver power. In this first protocol I am exploring, I'll be talking about the static or fixed voltages on USB-C ports. USB PD or power delivery, currently in version 4.1, supports fixed output voltages of 5, 9, 15, 20, 28, 36, and all the way up to 48 volts. 12 volt is an optional voltage and therefore not required by the specification. You will notice Apple's and others don't include this. For higher than 100 watts, the ports must have extended power range or EPR. I haven't seen any devices that supply more than 28 volts yet. The current and voltage must be negotiated with an e-marker cable above 3 amps for standard power range cables. The 28 volt EPR modes require a 240 watt marked cable, although some of these are fake so buyers should beware. These are all fixed voltages. Each device uses different technology. I will be getting into something called PPS in the second protocol I am exploring. I'll be talking about variable or adjustable voltages on USB-C ports. USB Power Delivery version 3.1 has another trick up its sleeve called PPS. This means programmable power supply. This allows the power adapter to vary the output voltage and can make your charging more efficient and cooler. So if your device is at four volts and the power supply can supply four volts, it can directly connect to the battery and deliver more power with less heat in the phone. Samsung takes advantage of this technology to charge phones at higher power rates without overheating. The EPR mode has its own special mode called AVS or adjustable voltage supply. This mode can vary the voltage from 15 volts all the way up to 48 volts. I don't know of any devices using this yet. Each device uses different technology and USB-C ports are often not compatible with custom protocols like QC from Qualcomm, often found on USB-A ports. Dell, on this 130 watt adapter, does not communicate with normal PD above 90 watts, and as far as I can tell, no one has reverse engineered this protocol yet. The biggest alternate technology is the Qualcomm Quick Charge protocol. This mostly uses the USB-A port and can also negotiate for higher voltages and therefore higher power. This is extended to quite high power levels, but has lost favor to USB-C devices. It looks like just one certified charger for Quick Charge 5, Basius. At this level, it turns out it's just compatible with USB PD. The maximum power you could get before this was only 7.5 watts, 1.5 amps and 5 volts on each port with USB 3. There are also technologies like Oppo Super VOOC, that is Voltage Open Loop Multi-Step Constant Current Charging, Flash Charge, and Super VOOC, which also uses a USB-A or C port and increases both current and voltage to achieve up to 240 watt charging. Small dash of marketing in there. It doesn't pass basic physics rules, so there's that. Custom protocols are device specific. On my devices, QC is hit or miss, none support VOOC, USB-C and A charging ports I can have compatibility issues, so hopefully USB-C and usb P will get more adoption in the future. I have one more thing we need to talk about. I know it sounds boring, but safety ratings are important. I have seen adapters on this channel that either don't meet their own safety claims or have outright fake logos. This is important because the only thing separating you from mains voltage is that power adapter. Poorly designed or built devices can be dangerous, and there have been reports of deaths with suspected links to unsafe power adapters, although far more likely is you will get burned. We see them as such innocuous devices and they are everywhere and part of our everyday lives. But you have to remember, the only reason that these adapters can be in your everyday life is because of the engineers designing them to be safe. One thing that's always consistent across Apple, HP, Dell, Samsung power adapters is they all will have proper safety listings. All right, let's work an example. Apple iPhone, any generation. These don't come with chargers, so we need to buy one, of course. Let's see what Apple has to say about how to charge this device. They give you a little bit of information, but they still don't specifically state a protocol. They state what it will work with, no, requires, a 20 watt charger, but then goes on to say all the way down to 5 watt chargers will work. Then other chargers will work too, maybe. Confusion City. 
They could simplify this. It uses USB PD charging technology, fixed voltage, 5 and 9 volts. It looks like here that old generation of charger is going to work just fine. It will be slower, but it's going to charge the phone. From an energy efficiency standpoint, you probably do want to upgrade from that old 5 watt charger though. Let's try another one, an HP laptop that uses USB-C for charging. The laptop state it supports charging, but only with HP power adapters. Well, they weren't lying. This thing won't charge with anything except HP or Dell USB-C power adapters on that USB-C port. So my alternative to use this is the barrel jack connector with a USB-C to barrel adapter to power my laptop from any USB-C power adapter. This works fine. I have no idea why they made it proprietary, but they did, and as with Apple, they list very little information, well, none, about what protocol is used to charge this device, making it nearly impossible to select a working charger besides HP or Dell units. Well, after that disappointment, it is time to move on to some chargers. Why can't they just make it easier and say what protocols these things use? It does nothing to benefit the company by not stating the performance statistics of devices. You get 10 pages about the camera, but they don't tell you how it charges. The first charger I'm looking at today is what I would call a basic phone charger. This is the Ugreen 20 watt USB-C single port charger. Don't let its tiny size fool you. This charger is still my go-to for the 20 watt category. It only supports two modes of operation, five and nine volts, which means this charger is compatible with charging iPhones. Per the Apple recommendation charger specification, this is all you need to know, neat. The charger does not have a USA or Canada safety listing, but it does have a Japanese one, so it may or may not meet your market requirements. I did tear this one down and was impressed by its construction. Will this charger work with my Pixel or Samsung phone? Yes, but not with fast charging. Device depending, it will top out at 5 to 15 watts because it won't negotiate for more volts from this adapter. This is probably the smallest wattage adapter I'd pick today. Thankfully, it is inexpensive and effective. It looks like they are trying to phase this one out though. I haven't checked out the replacement yet, but look for that video in the future. The next charger I am looking at is the Google 30 watt charger. This checks more boxes, but it isn't the most compact or smallest charger out there, but it is efficient and it is still the current model. And I do use it because it has all the modes up to 20 volts, including those variable voltage modes. So 25 watt Samsung fast charging is on the menu, as well as maxing out the charging speed of any iPhone and being capable of charging a laptop or tablet too. It won't be fast at charging a big device, but it is capable, not a bad option which is why this stays in the top spot for me. Of course, being from Google, I expect compatibility with Pixel phones. But what if you want to charge a watch and a phone, and maybe a laptop too? My old friend, the Bassius 100 Watt GAN 3 desktop charger is still on my list. I have used this charger a lot for a lot of testing. I use it as the reference charger for power banks since it delivers what it says it can and has very good efficiency from low power levels all the way up to the top of the range. It has reasonable idle power usage as well, only thing to consider is that bright LED and the non-removable power cord. There are some alternatives to this adapter that perform well and have an interchangeable cord too. The adapter has a very wide range of protocols from 100 watts and down, so charging with PPS isn't a problem. Although with two ports, it's 35 watts max PPS per port. People ask about GAN 5 all the time. I looked at the 65 watt slim GAN 5 and said, keep on looking. The new Anchor 100 watt multi-port wall charger, the A2343, is really a good charger. This is the first time I have seen Anchor come out with a newer product that really did step things up in terms of performance and capabilities. But of course, it comes with a price tag too. If you need a multi-port adapter and want better power negotiation with multiple devices, this is a great starting point. Of course, safety listed is a theme of all of my choices. This 100 watt charger is nearly as compact and lightweight as many of my 65 watt chargers, but with more capability. This earned it a spot in my list. The one I use every day, even if it has some flaws, is the Satoshi 165 watt charger. This is my current daily usage charger. I even take it with me when traveling, despite its desktop charger name. I don't feel the tingle with this charger. It doesn't make noise, although I've heard people complain that some of them do have a bit of coil whine under light loads. I tend to have at least three devices plugged in and sometimes four. The idle power usage is a bit high on this one, but for the use of laptop charging and multiple other devices, this gets buried in the noise. I haven't had any issues yet. The 200 watt version had some reports of iPhone 15 incompatibility. I really wasn't a fan of that 200 watt adapter in general. If you need an extended power range charger, so that's one with that 28 volt mode or 140 watts on one port, they're really all clones. Just pick one, it's probably fine. Don't expect great power sharing. The Anchor single port ones fail early. I still use my Roserin as a 140 watt charger and it's been okay. 
I don't have a lot of devices that need this much power, so it doesn't see a ton of use though. The next adapter is another new one, so it hasn't stood up to the test of time yet, but this adapter is also impressive. The 300 watt Ugreen, safety listed, largest I've tested, and very capable of charging a lot of devices on a lot of ports. It is a big adapter, so really, if you need to charge a MacBook Pro, want to charge your phone, a drone, a tablet, and a watch all at once, you may want to look this way. Or maybe power a whole desktop setup. I haven't looked at anything else in this power class, so this one wins by being the only one. Suggestions welcome. As with any of the chargers I've mentioned, I have full videos reviewing these things. They will be linked in down below. So that about does it. My late 2023 picks. These may not be the ones for you, so you remember to follow the steps of picking the right power adapter or charger. First, figuring out what your device needs to charge effectively, the protocol. This is the most difficult part because manufacturers don't tell you. Two, figure out how many watts you need and add some buffer to the watt number so the charger doesn't get too hot and lasts longer. And three, make sure the charger has some safety or compliance testing so you don't have to worry about it being dangerous. If you need more than one port, repeat steps one and two as needed. Adapters I use regularly, the Satoshi 165 watt, the Bassius 100 watt desktop, and the 30 watt Google charger work for my devices. These may not be the best for your specific mix, but hopefully throughout this video, you were able to learn the process of selecting the correct charger for your device. And looking at the multitude of options out there, you must select a charger that is appropriate for the device. It is not easy to do since there is a lot of confusion about what the charging method is for each device and what all the terms mean. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of public data on each charger's specific capabilities. And even within that, a charger may not meet its specifications. So the claim versus the reality may not be the same. I tried to test versus the standard performance and go from there. There's a lot of work to be done still to make sense of it all. Of course, the ecosystem is ever changing, so this won't be the last or the best video on the topic. It's just one of the videos on this topic. Thanks for watching. If you want to look up any of these adapters, you can check out the data for yourself on the pqs.app website linked in the description, as well as affiliate links, which will help support the channel at no cost to you. Also, the All Things website video list is the easiest way to find a specific video topic if I've covered it. Next week, the plan is to look at some power banks in the same process. Which one is worth getting, whether it works for your device and why to get one. I will compare the data from the 20 or so power banks I've looked at over the course of the last year and see which one is best and if there's a reason to get a more expensive one or if the cheap ones will do the job at hand. There's a schedule of video release dates on my website, so check it out. Thanks again and goodbye.